Hi everyone, Andrew here, and today I'm gonna show you how to insulate round pipe elbows. I'm actually gonna show you a process in how to do this and not just how to insulate an elbow because what I commonly see on the field is that people insulate a bunch of elbows, have them in a pile, and then they'll go to try to connect them to pipe, and it makes it very difficult to make a seal in between the pipe and that elbow. So today I'm gonna show you the process that I use that I find saves time and looks a whole lot better. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is an elbow that I pulled off of my shelf here that had already been insulated. And um, there's nothing wrong with this. I wouldn't do it this way. I'd never insulate an elbow at, before it's connected for a number of reasons. Um, one, you're gonna have to make a connection here. You're gonna have to make a connection here and you're gonna have to seal this connection. Two, you still have an angle here that needs to be filled. So you're, you're still doing a lot of the work later. So I'm going to show you a method that I find to be um, just a lot more effective with this. Um, it, it's, it does take more prep work in an attic versus on the floor. Um, but in the end, you'll see why it benefits. So I got an elbow here, 12 inch. I want to make sure that you keep this nice and clean and you don't get any um, sand or anything in these gores here because you won't be able to spin it. You want to spin it to where you want it. If I want a 90 degree elbow, I'm going to spin this to get to my 90 form. I'm going to go ahead and tape this up. All right, so I got my 12 inch elbow here. I've sealed all the gores on it. I've also sealed these points here where the sheet metal is connected. Anywhere that can leak air, you need to seal if it's in unconditioned space. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this elbow out of my way. And I've got a pattern here, 44 inches wide with a two inch lip. So if you watch my other video, you'll know this is what you use to wrap 12 inch pipe right here. Got my 44 inches with my two inch lip here. All right, when we do a pattern, there's a couple parts of this elbow we're looking at. Um, we want to see where the radius starts. So this right here is like the beginning of our radius on what I'm going to call the throat side. So let's just call this the throat and let's call this the heel. So from this point, I'm basically drawing a round circle. I'm not actually doing this. I'm only doing this for the purposes of the video, just so you know where I'm measuring from. But let's say that this is our round pipe here. All right, I've got this guideline here with a Sharpie and what this guideline is, is it's showing where my pipe stops and where the actual radius starts. And that's gonna be my marking points for laying out my pattern here. So what you would do is you would turn this elbow straight up and you would line your insulation seam right here with this point here. So that's the start of your pattern. And then this guideline I've got right here, I'm going to put a mark right here. And then I'm going to come down to the middle section and I'm going to put a mark right at that middle section there. And I'm going to continue rolling this elbow down until I get to my next guideline, which is right here. I'm going to put a mark here. And then here's the end of my pattern here. So I'm going to put a mark there. All right, so now that I've got my guide marks on my pattern. We're gonna find the center point of our pattern. We're gonna finish these guidelines out. Don't worry, this will get to a point. And just so you know, I don't do all these guidelines like this when I'm cutting these patterns because I've done it a lot. This is just for the purposes of the video and so that y'all understand how this works. But just to show y'all again, here is the start of my pattern here. Here's the part where the elbow starts radiusing. I've got a mark there. And then I've rolled this back. Here's the center point of my, um, I'm going to call it the heel. There's my guideline. 
here's my next mark, there's my guy, there's my line, and then here's my end. So I've got my center. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually draw an angle from here to here, from here to there. We're gonna do the same thing over here. All right, so here's my marks. This is the start of my radius. This material here is getting removed. This is the middle of my elbow. Then we have this material right here being removed as well. And this is another straight section of duct that's getting insulated. If you notice, when I drew these lines, I didn't go all the way to the center because I wanted a little bit of material to where this whole pattern stays together. And that's coming out. All right, so now I've got my pattern here and I'm just gonna go over it one more time. So this section here is no, there's no radius. It is just the continuance of my pipe right here. As you can see, that's gonna come up. And it's gonna wrap into here. So we put a mark in our, in our pattern right there. Then I've rolled the heel to here and I've marked that point. I've removed the material in between. I've continued to do the same exact thing on the opposite side. I've marked right here and I've removed the material in between. So what I now have is a pattern for my elbow. So you, you can make this pattern without having these pieces and just literally, this is the start of your pattern right here. You know, which, which, would, which would make this right here, right? The reason I don't like this is it's kind of hard to fit it all together and you'll see what I mean in a minute. But if I have this strip here, I can now easily wrap this around my pipe, staple it, and now I can work with this fit and it's being held up by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and start insulating this elbow. I wanna note here, this is supposed to be taped. I'm not taping it because I don't wanna leave this connected in my shop for the next two months. So go ahead and take this and wrap it around. Make sure I'm centered. This pattern actually ends up being slightly longer here. It, it's not enough to worry about. I'm just bringing it up because I wanna bring up a point. But we could cut a bunch of these patterns with these, these a little bit longer and not for any specific fitting. And we can then go and insulate all of our elbows by trimming down these patterns. So if this was longer, I could just simply trim it up and it'll work on any 12 inch elbow. But this works out here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over like this. And then I'm left with my center section here. Um, before I do my center section though, I'm gonna go ahead and tape this to stop it from pulling back when I tighten this center up. I'm laying that duct tape on there, I'm not just torquing down on it. Mess that one up. Cut. All right, so I've got this taped up. This taped up, I used doubles on it, which is extremely excessive, but it looks so good that it's worth it. And I'm left with this center section right here. Coming around. All right, so now I'm left with the center section right here, and I could actually just pull this tight and leave it like that, because if you see here, it actually wraps into my pattern a little bit. It's, it's, it comes out a little bit too far. Um, I could trim that up, but if I don't, I think it's gonna be fine either way. There's, okay, there's, there's 
a little bit of allowance when over wrapping a vapor barrier, you're not supposed to, but um, I'm just gonna simply tuck my insulation a little bit here. I'll bring this other section over, tuck that in a little bit there. And now this is a difficult seam without adding a lip. So I'm actually just gonna use duct tape for this. Use just a thin strip here. I'm using this just to get it tight. Now, anytime you use duct tape like that, when there's tension on it, you've got to staple it. All right, so we've got our, our midsection tightened up here and we're left with this on the outside here, which doesn't look good at all. We're gonna take, we're gonna put our hand in between the vapor barrier and the fiberglass. And we're gonna basically, we're gonna form that up like that. And then we're gonna take our staple gun. See how that curve, we curve the material. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So on bigger ducks, this is gonna be more of a thing on this opposite side. You know, I, the bigger the duck, the more you end up having to tuck it. Use this nice new staple gun. The staple guns are kind of, the staples are kind of temporary for holding it for duct tape in this situation. But you notice on this side, I'm perfectly insulated all the way, all the way throughout. But on this side, I've got quite a big gap here. That's okay, we can use just a stuffer on that. So I'll come back to the scrap. And I'm just gonna stuff three inch insulation here, but I'm gonna go a little overboard because I don't know exactly how much makes three inches. So I'm just gonna make sure there's enough R value there. So we got that. So that's gonna take a double piece for sure though. So now we're gonna tape this up. And I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna kinda fill that area in there. So this insulation was uh, torn up from the onset, but that's not a problem. We'll just cover that up. Bunch of doubles. Get away with some singles here because this was nice and clean. Now I'm not just pulling down as hard as I can. I'm kind of laying this the way I want it to look. A little bit more tape here in the center and we're done. The back is gonna look good. So um, all this doesn't look perfect yet but I'm gonna put a coat of this mastic on it and it's gonna look perfect. Now, one thing I commonly see is people painting the seams on their duct and only their seams. All right, so this is what I commonly see. People will mastic just the tape seams and technically this meets code. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it looks awful. Um, I did mask it down here, obviously, because I got the table, but now I'm gonna mud this completely solid to show you what it can actually look like. So as you can see here, I did solid mastic all the way from here to here, and it just has a much cleaner look. It looks like one piece of material. You know, we always say mastic and tape make the duck man what he ain't. So you'll see me burning through a whole lot of duct tape. Couple quick time-saving things here. 
as it relates to insulating elbows, and um, there's probably people that argue with me that insulating these elbows in a pile is probably more efficient than the method I'm showing you. I just disagree, and that's just my opinion. But there's a method I have, and um, if I was doing a crawl space job, you know, let's say this is a ranch style house. This is a crawl space. And let's say we have a package unit on one side of the house and we have a straight trunk line, which is very, very common for a ranch style house. We've got boots around the perimeter here. Something like that, you know. As a mechanic, I would first try to determine the most efficient way of installing all of this. Let's say that the midway point here is about 15 feet from here to here. So from the boot to my trunk line is probably slightly under 15 foot or something. The easiest way to go about this would, if you're doing a hard pipe trunk line, hard pipe run job would be to measure out all your supply outlets, make all that up outside of the house and then carry it prefabbed underneath the house. So we would nail off our boots. We would have our trunk line hung. Um, I may actually slide this trunk line in mark all my takeoffs if it's not a very long distance. I might slide the whole trunk line out and cut all my takeoffs and then slide it all in one piece, um, pre-insulated, pre-fabricated. It really depends on the application. What I'm trying to do here is just get your mind thinking about what is the most efficient way of doing this. So I could go here and I could come under the house and take a tape measure and measure from this point to this point and this point to this point and say these are a little over 10 feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up three 10 footers to cover these three runs. I'm just gonna go ahead and prefab them. So Let's say I did that and I made a list for the person working with me or myself or whoever. And I said, I need three 10 footers of six inch pipe with elbow. All right, and then I might have some short runs over here. Like let's say there's a bathroom here or something. I might put one five foot, four inch pipe with elbow, all right? I've had some projects that lay out like this and your boot goes into your floor. You have all your boots in. You've already set up all your 10 footers here, but the difference is you've already put an elbow on it and then showing that single pattern method I showed you, you've already got your elbow pattern connected. So when I go into the house now, I'm dragging most all the runs already prefabricated with this one connection point left to do. So I can go into the house, have somebody hold up one side or I could use my leg or temp strap it or something. This gets pushed up into the boot right here. I screw this off, strap this run down. Then I can just simply come back, lift this up and form my strip out right there. All that was done outside of the house and all I was left with was making this one connection, sealing this one connection, insulating this elbow. Now, I'm still short at my takeoff side. You know, this, this, this run was about 13 foot long and I'm three foot short, but now I, now I can go, after I've hung all of my runs, I can go and measure the cut sections in between and make up all my cut pieces and come under with my cut pieces and fit those all the takeoffs. So that's just a quick time saving tip there. Um, and then lastly, you could make up a bunch of these for all your six inch turns. If you had a, a, a you know, hard pipe duct system with a ton of elbows and there's no way to dry fit it, no way to figure out your lengths. Um, you could just go ahead and run it, have elbows and have these little tag ends here that can be trimmed down to whatever strip out size you need. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Leave any comments in the comment section. I'll do my best to respond. I'm Andrew with AGL Mechanical Tips and remember your quality is your reputation.